I'm going to talk about today something new, something that I don't often talk about, and that is some really niche JRPG games, because that is a guilty pleasure of mine. And I just often find myself interested in titles just like these. They also gotta be good, if you know what I mean. I hope you wanna stick around for the entire video, and if you hit like on all of my videos, more people will see them. The first game that I want to show you guys, and this is because I found this game myself and I found it to be interesting and it looked so cool. So when it was on sale, because not long ago the PlayStation 4 had a really huge JRPG sale, and they often have that, so you know, all of these titles in this video are surely going to go on sale sooner or later. A lot of these games are also on PC and other consoles, I mean. So it's not only in PlayStation 4, but they are interesting nonetheless. The first game is called Crystar. <laughs> Crystar, yes, that is the title, and it is an action RPG for the PlayStation 4 and PC, actually, developed by Gemdrops, and it had its Japan release in 2018, but international release in 2019, you know, last year. And I was immediately drawn to its art style. This is the sort of art style that I just like. I enjoy this, and the graphics also looked insane, super good, already there. I was interested. Sign me up. But I have a feeling that it is super niche. It's a niche game that not many people are talking about. And what can I say about the gameplay? The gameplay is actually just simple enough. You play as this girl who accidentally killed her own sister and made a deal with two demons. So in order to save her sister, she carries out tasks in purgatory. So yeah, it's actually quite dark, because you have to kill a lot of souls in purgatory and stuff. You have to do all these things for these demons in order to save your own sister. And a lot of the stories in this game is just sad and, and deep. <laughs> All characters that you meet throughout the game have super tragic backstories. We are talking losing unborn babies, family betrayals, revenge killings, and regret, heartbreak, you name it. The entire game has this dark theme to it. It is a dungeon crawler-like game. It is an hack and slash with several playable characters with several skills and abilities each. This game also just reminds me of Oninaki, a game I reviewed earlier this year. It has that vibe because that was also really dark and very like hack and slashy with several playable characters and abilities to each of them. I mean, the most obvious difference between Oninaki and this one is that in this game, Crystar, you can control the camera. Now, while the actual gameplay may be very repetitive and basic, the story is actually really rich. The graphics are stunningly beautiful, and the piano-like soundtrack is just spot on. Outside of dungeons, you return to your real-life bedroom where you can check your items, equipment and collectibles. And you can also pet your dog. And this game is just really visually beautiful, so it's a true hidden gem. Now the con to this game is that it is really repetitive. The dungeons are pretty much the same all over again and over again. But I play for the story in this one and also for, for the beauty of the game. You know, I can find myself enjoying a game if it just looks really, really pretty. But the pro with this game is that it is what I like to call a mindless game. And by that, I mean in between the story sequences, which you obviously want to follow along to. The actual gameplay when you hack and slash through these dungeons, and sometimes they are actually really big. You can actually mindlessly do it. <laughs> you can be on the phone with someone while you're hacking and slashing away, and that is so relaxing when games are mindless in a good way. So I want to say look out for Crystar when it is on sale. It has actually proven to be a decent title and I have found myself going back to it several times already. It's you again, Nanana. <laughs> Over. Be headed. 
Now this game, I have played all summer, mm, sort of, and also a bit into fall. But I just never talked about it on my channel. It's about time, because I've actually found myself enjoying this and I've been talking with my Discord people a bit about how weird and fun this game actually is. And I am talking about Death and Request, super niche game. It is by ID Factory and Compile Heart, the people behind the Hyperdimension Neptunia games, which is uh, another weird obsession of mine. It was a really big obsession some years ago. They make super decent games, and I consider myself a fan of Compile Heart and ID Factory. Now, in Death and Request, and actually all games by ID Factory and Compile Heart, the art style is just wild. Wild, crazy art style, and I love it. Colors, contrast, the actual character designs. Uh, super good. <laughs> and also they are very known for making games with a really good story and excellent writing in the story. The history is good. <laughs> so the story in Death and Request, and you want to pay attention to the story, the story is epic. It's about a girl who is stuck inside a video game she helped write the code for. Let that sink in. So she was a programmer, this girl that you're playing, creating an MMO game, but she gets trapped within the code of the game. So she is actually within the game and you're playing her in the game. And she meets all these funny NPCs that she helped design. But this video game that she is in, it's so meta, it's funny, but this video game, is full of bugs because the game itself has been infiltrated with you know a virus corrupting the entire code making her unable to escape her life within this game and there is no way for her to log out of the game so she's stuck inside this game now she actually has contact with a colleague from the real world who helps her try to escape the video game and since oh and since the game has no log out feature coded into it yet, she has to beat the game because that is an automatic log out. Do you love the story or not? I love it. So she has to beat her own game to escape. You can only imagine how weird and crazy the dialogues in this game are from just knowing that. It is just so exciting. <laughs> the communication's lagging out. You're starting to buffer. I can't see anything on my end. Are none of my messages going through? Even in the backlog? Wait, is there a chance that the game is cutting me off on purpose? Gameplay in itself is not the death and request's strongest side. I mean, it's decent, but it's also very basic. But story and dialogues makes up for the lack of good actual gameplay. The combat is turn-based, but you can move around freely when it is your turn. And if you align yourself right, you can knock back enemies, sending them flying about, knocking into other enemies as well. The combat is actually sort of fresh and new. I have not seen this sort of combat being done before. So I think this is a cute and fun game and I am enjoying it a lot. And of course it's just super niche. But I want to hear if there are people out there that are also fan of games like this. But keep in mind, Jesus. <laughs> but keep in mind, this is a part visual novel. A lot of text and dialogue and you know, the story is the strong part of this game. Just keep that in mind. It's not a gamey game, it's a visual novel game with a bit of gamey game. <laughs> Actual gameplay, I mean. But you know, I think it's good. Check it out if you want to. Out of here! I'll handle this! Great work, everyone! Now, my third game for this video is very, again, I feel like I say the same about all of these games, but they're, they're special, niche, and cute, and kind of my guilty pleasure. And this one is just like that as well. And this game is Dragon Star Warnir. I mean, these games, I feel like they are so hidden from the general people. 
I want to know if you have actually heard about any of these games at all. This game is also another game by ID Factory and Compile Heart. It is also part visual novel and it is also turn-based, you know, a turn-based RPG. As ID Factory games are very story heavy, the story in this one, in short, is that you play as Sephi, who is actually a witch hunter. He hunts witches because he hates them or something. And by accident he gets turned into a witch himself. So, you know, there he is, in the middle of the forest, being a witch and all, and he can't go back to his friends and, you know, Hi guys, I'm a witch now, <laughs> because he will be killed, sort of thing. So, he is found by some other witch girls, some other witches, and they take him in. So, I mean, he just hangs out with the witches. <laughs> the writing in this game is excellent, as always. I play this game also, mainly for the story because it's a cozy story and actually really interesting to follow along to. You know, when I started to play this game, I was talking with Ishaman and I was like, listen to this, and I was like telling him the story because I was so involved with the story. Um, so yeah, this is a, a good story game. Also really cute graphics, cute art style. Again, I gotta say, the art style is just on point. So in this game, you enter worlds from the map and you change between characters, each of them has unique abilities that you can perform out in the field. The music is beautiful too, voice acting is also super good. It reminds me of other ID Factory games like Hyperdimension Neptunia games and actually it reminds me a lot of Fairy Fencer also, which is also a game that I reviewed last year. And the actual combat, it is turn-based, but it's it's kind of new and funny and fresh, this one also, because you are on your broomstick and you can position yourself to be on the top, middle or bottom of the battlefield, and it is important to position yourself correctly. The game has several different, you know, optional difficulties, so, you know, I play on easy because I always do, and I have died. Where is your family right now? Do they know that you've become a witch? <sighs> I'm up! So yeah, that was all the super niche games that I wanted to talk about uh, today. I wanted to talk about a few more, but I had so much I wanted to say about each of these that the video is gonna be too long. If you know of any games like these, leave them down below because I always check out your suggestions and I sometimes find super good games through the comment section that you guys are suggesting and you can also look around in the comment section for suggestions for yourself you know talk amongst yourselves down there that was all for today folks my battery is running out of battery but do you like my new decorations and new tablecloth now hit like on my video and follow my Twitter and Instagram. And I will see you later. I'm so happy that Christmas soda is now in all stores. So I'm a Christmas soda drinker.